Hello, I will be going over the Sage Energy Management Platform going through the web interface. So when you first log in, you'll be brought to this screen called your dashboard screen. You'll see here in the top left corner next to the Sage logo, your account name and any locations on your account. So as you can see here in this demo account, I have two locations I'm presently looking at. And then if I wanted to talk a little bit more about the Sage uh, location structure, I can click on this little icon here and we can see that uh, we have two more layers of structure for our accounts called nests and groups. And they're just two more layers of organization that you can use to organize uh, your population with it in Sage and be able to group it together for reporting or for uh, just analyzing the data in general. As you can see here, the dashboard has quite a few tiles of glanceable information you can see when you first log in. So you can see you have your monitoring frequency, your performance of your system, and monetary loss by day, month, and year. Each one of these uh, different tiles has a little information icon, and if you click on it, it brings up a little page that shows uh, what exactly uh, this tile is presenting to you and how we kind of calculate uh, those uh, data sets. The other thing I wanted to show off about the dashboard is that everything is dynamic. So if I turn off my second location here in Three Rivers and just focus on my Chicago location, you can see that the dashboard updated dynamically to reflect the 81 traps in the Chicago location. And again, I'll just click on Three Rivers again to show everything kind of refreshes and changes. So again, if you wanted to narrow down to you only have one location and you just want to look at one group, you can do that and the information will update on the fly. As you can see below that, we have the steam loss trend chart, which kind of shows us how our system is performing over time and how it's trending, right? So as you can see here, there was some initial uh, losses found. They started to be taken care of, changed to good, and the losses were coming down. But now it looks maybe there's some new failures cropping up in a newer survey. So we're starting to see those the trend go back up. At the bottom of the screen here, we can see our annual losses, fuel, CO2, and savings potential if we were to replace all of our failing traps. If you look over here on the right, we have our alerts, and this is sorted by the most recent at the top, and it's going to be just any time uh, a condition is set, uh, a failed state, uh, plugged, blow through, cold, and again, they're going to be the most recent at the top. You can also see we have the condition breakdown right here. And again, it's gonna break it out by the three ways uh, you can collect data in Sage. So you have our real-time monitors, uh, a device that actually clamps on to the piping or the trap itself to monitor it 24 seven, our handheld uh, Sage UMT uh, that you can use to test the trap. And then of course you can manually update the condition uh, after surveying it uh, a different method. So you can update it through the web here or you could update it through the mobile app and those recordings will be documented here. So you could click through to look at one of these tag numbers if you wanted to from the alert screen, or you could navigate to the equipment screen by clicking here. And here you'll see it's just a list of your population. Uh, the default sort is by tag number. You have the condition colors uh, that you kind of saw on our dashboard there. You can see it's kind of glanceable. So you see the green means all these traps are good. Red indicates a blow through. And of course I have my condition column set as my second column, but someone could uh, move it along. Each one of these is uh, customizable and move. you can move any column to wherever you see fit. Uh, it is customized by your login, so you're not affecting anybody else's view. If you go up here to table options in the top right, you can see you can add or remove pretty much any characteristic you can record about a steam trap in Sage. So you can make your equipment screen uh, what you want. And of course, like I was stating, you can filter and sort. So I could just look at blow through traps. I could click on the word condition here and sort uh, alphabetically A to Z. Click again, Z to A in this specific case with the conditions. A third click takes me back to my default sort by tag number. So you can sort on any one of these columns and filter on any one of these columns. So next we're going to go to one of our steam trap. So if I click on this tag number here, we can see that we're brought to our steam trap. So in Sage, we allow uh, up to five photos to be added to each asset. So you could uh, vary it depending on what you want to have. But as you see on the web interface, when you kind of scroll over the photo, it kind of does this little zoom in effect. 
but you can add an image from your computer or if you're using the mobile app you could take a photo and of course you'll see it here you could change which image is the default you can edit all of the trap characteristics right here and if you scroll down you'll see there's quite a bit of information you can document about each steam trap including the valves around it in the installation and so you can see here if you click on one of these you can go ahead and fill out the information go back to the diagram and you can see where there is an icon it indicates there is a valve you can also see uh, that uh, the condition is kind of glanceable so if one of these valves were to be set let's say for example right now i could say this one is leaking i go back to the diagram it is now uh, blue indicates that it hasn't been saved yet but it is yellow behind it so let me go ahead and save and exit and come back in And if I scroll back down here, you'll see now it has a yellow box. If I scroll a little bit further, it's right here you're going to see you can put in comments, recommendations, and a correct incorrect installation toggle. Now this is going to be um, if something around the Steam Trap itself or the Steam Trap itself isn't installed correctly, you could toggle this so it can show up on certain reports that I'll go over later. And if you scroll further, you'll see any custom fields. So beyond all the default fields we offer, uh, customers can add uh, whatever uh, field they feel they need to document information about your Steam Traps. Up here at the top, if you click on history, you can see all of the history of the steam trap every time it's been uh, surveyed, which would be the condition timestamp, or any time it's been modified. And the beauty of these is if you click on any one of these timestamps, you actually get a snapshot of the steam trap as it was in that time. So it's a really great, great way to look at history and kind of dive into the information about our steam traps. You can update the condition. Uh, so in this case, I could just click good. That sets a new timestamp. So if I go to my history right here, we can see it just set it right now. And of course, we could duplicate a steam trap if we have one that is the same in our line if we're adding a new one. So I can back out of here, go back to our equipment screen here. But now we've got all of our steam traps in there. We've we've loaded them up and we want to run reports. So that'd be the next thing here. We can click on reports. We can go ahead and click on our first one, the Steam Trap Executive Summary. Each one of these is looking at uh, different uh, data points from our population. This Executive Summary, I'll just kind of generate it and give a quick glance at it. So it has a, a date picker. You can set it to be for the current date that you're accessing the system, or you could run a historical version. You can run it in full color or black and white. Maybe you have aspirations to print it, you just want it in black and white. And then we have a summary and detailed version. So let me go ahead and show the summary version. So you can see each one of our reports is generated with a title page, table of contents, steam costs that are on the location, and then the data from this specific report. And the executive summary is looking at that high level overview of the population. So again, I ran this on just the Chicago location. So we're looking at 81 traps. And what is the trap type makeup? How many of them are discs, inverted buckets? How many of those are in a failed state? How many of uh, the trap population are Watson McDaniels or Armstrong? How many of those are in a failed state? What is our condition summary? Our annualized summaries are right here. So again, it's giving us a high level overview of our population. And if we scroll past this first page, you can see it actually goes down to our nest level now. So this is just building 312. And so it's just the 35 traps within that, that subcategory. And again, it's the same data set. It's breaking it down by trap type, manufacturer, application, and condition. And if you scroll further, you're gonna see the other buildings selected in this location. So as you can see, it gives that high level overview of the population and how it sits. The Steam Trap Survey Summary is actually the identical format. It just looks for traps that have had a survey performed on them. So if I run it right now in our default 30 days, it's only going to include the Steam Traps that were surveyed in the last 30 days or had a condition change, right? And so I changed that one condition while I was going over that Steam Trap. So we would expect at least one trap to be on here, but in this case, there actually is two. So again, the format is the same, so I'm kind of going to go past this briefly. But I just wanted to show that it's focusing on just the steam traps that were surveyed in the range you set. 
So again, if you set this range for one week, uh, a full month, maybe you were surveying for a full month or updating conditions periodically throughout a month, you could run it for 30 days, you can run it for a year if you wanted to. It reports on every condition change recorded. The summary version is just the same as uh, the executive summary as we saw. The detailed version of both reports, uh, basically the subcategories, the manufacturer summary, uh, the details, uh, the trap uh, application and models are all on their own page. So it's a little bit more detailed, a little bit more fleshed out report. The next, ver next report here is the work order defective trap report. And this is gonna report on any failures in our system. Again, the default, like, like the, uh, Steam Trap Executive Summary is uh, today or the day you've entered the system. You can always run a historical version if you'd like to look at historical records. And this one by far has the most <laughs> customization to the report. So as you can see, um, you have the option to include the incorrect installation toggle and defective valves. So as I went over both of those, if you had toggled this because maybe some piping was incorrectly installed or the trap itself, like I stated, or the, def uh, the valve around it was defective and you want to include that in the report. So if I generate this version of it, we're going to see all of our traps that had a failed state, but then also good traps that were had the incorrect installation toggle set or had a uh, uh, valves that were in a failed state, like a leaking valve or a plugged valve. And so we can see here, we can kind of get some, uh, right here we see on tag 002, we have a defective ancillary. It has a shutdown required to tackle it. But again, it's just strips of data for each trap. So again, this is the summarized version. So again, we have 009 blow through. If the physical location is uh, documented or uh, if there's any notes uh, or recommendations, those are included. And you'll see the defective ancillaries is referring to the um, valves around the seam trap. And so again, that's the summarized version. The detailed version would include a full page for each steam trap. And then you have the option to toggle on custom fields if you want on that detailed version. So if you toggle on custom fields right now, it automatically takes you uh, to the detail version of this report. And so again, that's going to generate a, a much larger report, uh, a full page for each trap. The trap detail report uh, is very similar. It's just going to include every trap regardless of condition. This is just uh, basically the same kind of uh, idea as the work order. I'm going to go ahead and open the summarized version just to show it to you. You can see here we have our same title page, table of contents, and you can see just from uh, this right here, this can be quite a large report granted because it is going over each steam trap. So it does look like, let me pop back, Ah, the, the trap details was toggled off. So this is the detailed version, not the summarized version. So this kind of gives you that glance at what um, the uh, detailed version of the work order report looks like too, is you get that full page view. So if I just toggle this back on real quick and generate this one. You can see here if I scroll through, we get a much more condensed, right? The table of contents was like two pages. This is only three or four pages. And as you can see, it's much slimmer. Each trap gets a little bit more information about it. But it's a great, great way to kind of just look at each steam trap. And the detailed version obviously presents almost every detail, if not every detail, out of Sage. As you can see here, the last one is an export steam trap data. This is just an Excel spreadsheet. So you're just ex basically it's you can use it as a backup or to import your data into something that can ingest a spreadsheet. It's just an Excel spreadsheet that contains every bit of information you have documented in Sage. So each steam trap is a row and each uh, detail about that steam trap, uh, the model, the manufacturer, the line size in, line size out, every little detail is a different column. And as you can see here, uh, you could run a current version or historical version, or you could end in also we have the option to uh, change whether you want to include simulated steam losses. So what this is basically doing is adding in uh, loss values for every single steam trap, regardless of condition. 
so that you could have visibility on what are your high priorities if they were to fail, right? You can kind of take a look at what steam traps would have the highest monetary loss if they were to go to a full blow through. And so that covers uh, most of the platform. The other new feature I wanted to show off was the announcements. So if you click on this little megaphone here, you'll see the most recent updates we've made to Sage, and we will update these every time we push out a new update. So you have more visibility on changes, uh, bug fixes, any refreshes to the UI can all be seen here. The three most recent updates will always be visible. And uh, that covers the surface of the Sage uh, platform. Thank you for your time.